I've been working with um, genetic data sets. We had a couple of different types of genetic data sets that we generated. And the point there was to basically create a, a, a list of all of the different microbial species that we find in wasting sea stars, and then all the different microbial species that we find in healthy sea stars. Um, and then the hope was that we could find something in those wasting stars that's not in the healthy stars. And that would give us, you know, a good indication that we might have a, a causative pathogen. Um, and so I was working with all of that genetic data, gener and I finally got to a place where I would generated these different lists. And it was very evident um, right away that there was tons of Vibrio, um, different Vibrio species within our wasting sea stars. And we weren't really seeing that in our healthy sea stars. I said, look at all, like, there's all this Vibrio in these wasting stars, like that's wild. And, and we started to break it down into species because there's lots of different species of Vibrio in the marine environment. And so we're kind of like toggling things on and off, breaking it down, break, and then it just became very clear. We got to Vibrio pectinicida and we just saw it in every single wasting sea star sample. And then we looked at our controls and it was just not in any of them. And I think there was a moment of kind of like, just looking between each other, like not really believing it. And that was my initial reaction was like, okay, so I've done something wrong. Um, and I need to go back and figure out. And then after, you know, months of trying to disprove myself, we, we, we were just like, I think, I think we might be right. Like, this is kind of wild. Sea stars are actually like pretty incredible species um, for ecologists or anyone that's, you know, taken high school or undergraduate biology courses. They might be familiar with this concept called the keystone species. And it basically describes a species that kind of has this disproportionate impact on the ecosystem that it uh, inhabits. The other aspect that I'm really interested in is um, breeding, um, captive breeding for disease resilience. Um, and so the hope is that we can find um, some resistance in sunflower sea stars in particular. We do have, you know, remnant populations here in BC. Um, and so there, it's, it's very possible that we do have sea stars or individuals that are resistant to disease. Um, and if we can find them, which we might be able to identify within the genome of these individuals, then we can actually selectively breed them. So we can decide that we're going to breed individuals together that have better uh, capacities to kind of withstand or fight off infections with this bacteria. Um, and those would be excellent candidates for reintroduction because we want to make sure that what we're reintroducing out into the wild is actually going to be able to survive.